Yes, yes, yes. Shalom, Chavarim. Shalom, Rastafari. Shalom. Greetings, greetings, brothers and sisters. Let's let's speak freely. May we speak freely. May I and I speak freely concerning Rastafari and the Bible. Let's speak freely concerning Rastafari and the Bible. First of all, I'd like to give thanks, um, first of all, to um, Nigis Saba, Sister Nigis Saba. Right, um, I think it's uh, it was a blue frequency. I hope I'm not misarticulating the eyes platform, but we're supposed to have a reason, man. But just to hail up to Nigis Saba and also to the honorable priest Isaac, give thanks, give thanks. Was on and in the tiger's den a couple of days ago, and looking forward even in a uh, couple of hours to going forward on the tiger's temple on the priest isaac the institute on his channel on his platform as well and hopefully we will be able to maybe live stream on the rastafari israelites as well and um in the reason that we had the brief reason that we had i think it was thursday yeah the previous thursday upper room of zion thursday because the podcast was coming on soon and it was a little overlap right there 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 but it was very very good i give thanks for the for the reasoning and i'm gonna emphasize reasoning and also groundation or some would say ground nation uh, i'm gonna say we're gonna say groundation right here so rastafari and the bible rastafari and the bible to be or not to be that's the question there to be decided rastafari and the bible and there's enough discussion in social media the brother also had made mention of that you know on social media different platforms he has done a couple of um videos and presentations and had different brothers and ones and ones in the community to give um, their various expertise and their insight, you know, as to the subject matter concerning Rastafari. We say the movement of Jah people, Rastafari, Katamari Hada Selassie's people, and the Bible. And the Bible, of course, leads to like the points of theology, leads to the Judeo-Coptic, Judeo-Christian, you know, this ancient 3,000 plus year, you know, history that the Israelites of Ethiopia and those of the true church and the professing Ethiopian Tawahedo church are witnesses to, right? So, I give thanks because this has been a medi, a medi for a while, as we see some backlash, what's called backlash some places, because there's some who are Rasta, right, and there's others who are more fully Rastafari. Now, we use Burhan Selassie, a.k.a. Bob Marley here, Robert Nesta Marley, better known as Bob Marley here. He reminds I and I of um, uh, Timotewos, right, Timotewos in his background, because even Timothy, that we have in the Brit Chadasha, the Adis Kidan, the New Testament. In the New Testament part of the Bible, we have Timothy. I think there's like the letters, epistles to Timothy first and the second one written by Rabbi Shaul, a.k.a. the apostle, great apostle to the Gentiles, our brother pa- Paulos. Paulos. Also, I'd like to reason some more on that, the brother brought up uh, um, St. Paul as well. Right now, Let's just answer this right here. I'm just mentioning this as a kind of a point of reference to Timothy and to Burhan Selassie Bar Marley. But some say, oh, well, he wasn't an Israelite because his father allegedly was white. But then we have Timothy, right? Timothy, his mother was a Jewess, right? It was a Yehudi, right? A Yehudit, right? And his father was a Gentile, I mean, it was a, a, a Greek. You know, he was not you know, of the people of um, Yisrael, of Amo Yisrael, Yasharala. He was not, right? Timothy's father, but his mother. Now, it's interesting, this particular witness and testimony of Timothy. We know that many of the different Hebrews and Israelites will point to Timothy. I don't know if they really go into a deeper study to see, well, who Timothy's, you know, mother was, who his father was, and his particular unique situation. This is why we did a video some years ago um, saying that, well, you're a Jew, a Yehudi, right, if your mother <laughs> is a Jew. I don't know if you've heard that before, that some um, Jews and in popular Judaism today say, well, you're a Jew if your mother's a Jew, 
right? Others say, no, you're only an Israelite if your father's an Israelite. And they'll point to Numbers chapter 1, verse 18, the pedigree. Now, we've touched on that and we're going into that more here in this season as we're in the fourth book of motion, the Rastafari Sabbatical Studies, for the Shabbat Strong. Check out more at LOJS.org. But let's just point this out. So we, this is one reason why we use the still, right, of... Um, our Rastafari Timotewos, right, a.k.a. Burhana Selassie. Also, he addressed this subject matter, you know, in his witness, and his testifying, in his testimony, in his time of witness, because he's a martyr. A martyr is one who bears witness, who testifies to the truth, who bears witness to the truth. And sometimes that truth is so, is so, um, powerful that one seek to kill it before it can grow you know therefore we get the secondary sense of martyr martyr in the first sense means to testify to be a witness to be a witness to but the subject matter here is concerning rastafari and the bible yay or nay right to be or not to be yay or nay we would say based on the teaching of his majesty Based on teaching of the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, his imperial majesty, Halas Selassie I, elect of God, king of kings of Ethiopia, will say it's a yea. It's a yea and it's a monacity, right? Yet, yet, hold, hold, hold now. Yet we have to put it within the reality of the experience of our people, the once lost, now found, right? Their pre-existing condition, to be or not to be. Well, the prerequisite, what be, there, there be a prerequisite, right? There be pre-existing conditions, right? That we find ourselves experiencing and having gone through before those of us who are called, right? Called or who choose, you know, the way, the truth and life of the new name, the precious name, Rastafari. And we say Rastafari, we're defining Rastafari in the fullness. Rastafari, who is the Rastafari? The Rastafari is Kedamawi Haile Selassie. So that's our namesake, right? our namesake. So just in basic, proper order, let all things be done decently and in order, we who are Rastafari, right, are directly connected and related Right, based on our namesake, based on our very name, we have his name right upon us. Now, there should be noted there's a difference between the kind of outer court, right, and the inner court. So, I just spoke to the inner court, right, the inner court. As we reach the outer court, right, we have like Rasta, and in Rasta, we tend to have like a mixed multitude. But many of us, before we really come to the true teaching of His Majesty, true light of Kedemawi Hala Selassie, and really study to shew ourselves approved, we're coming from all different sort of um, backgrounds and experiences and, and pre-existing conditions and conditionings, right? As Matthew speaks about, you know, our education, you know, our, our environment, you know, our experience has may have ill-prepared us and Ill, being ill prepared for the Bible in spirit and in truth, the real truth of the word, because first we have, many of us have received counterfeit Christianity or been exposed to counterfeit Christianity and different ones have been more exposed to that, right? And, and hurt by that, right? Hurt by the counterfeit Christianity or have had it, you know, forced down their throats, you know, forced to, to believe and made to make to be lie Eve, make believe. They've been under make believe. They've been psychologically traumatized by counterfeit Christianity, right? By white racism, pseudo white supremacy, you know, whitewash, white Anglo Saxon Protestant counterfeit Christianity. Especially for us, right, we the once lost now found the beta Israel here of the West. In the Americas and in the Caribbean. The Americas, we're saying North America, Central America, South America, and the Caribbean. We over here in this Western, right, in the lands of the West, right, in this Western dispersion. Right? So when we put that, first of all, that's what has to be put first and foremost. And there's an audio that we had, um, did, as we was building up to some of the um, possible subject matters that 
I and the Honorable Priest Isaac would discuss and reason on on his platform, and that was one of them. I thought that was one of them. We saw a couple of vids. Um, we get that notification when he posts, and a few other ones post. We get the notification on our phone, so we got to see that over the past maybe couple of weeks, maybe a month or more, right? But on and off, but more so on recently, he had a few subject matters, very interesting titles and subject matters discussing the Tiger's Temple and Tiger's Den and elsewhere on his platform, you know, regarding the Bible. There was one particular one, the Bible and the Septuagint. So we had briefly reason and to heal up his Empress, Empress Naya, you know, on the business, you know, keeping the link and communication between I and I and I brothers so that we can do these, you know, reasonments and come together on the air and hopefully um, edify, you know, I and I people, you know, Rastafari and also others, right, who are seeking the truth, right, the truth that we are being witness to, the truth that we are living, the truth that we are proclaiming to be the truth, you know, so Rastafari in the Bible, yes, Rastafari in the Bible, the Bible is very, very important. As I mentioned to I and I, brother, on the ear, and I like to state this here, this is one reason why I record this right here, right, just to have this statement, um, this reasonment, like, on the record for ones and ones to overstand our perspective, because we've put out a lot of content you know, and presentations over the years on various aspects and on the sabbatical studies. And ones might be, um, how can we say, well, curious as to, well, how do we see this particular subject matter? Seeing that, as um, Priest Isaac mentioned in social media, there's been a whole lot of <laughs> um, conversation and reasoning. And some of it has been very, very, how can we say, very personal, very subjective, very emotional, even very painful. So some of the times, some of the brothers and sisters, some of the Rasta, I say Rasta specifically here in the outer court, because we come to the fullness of Rastafari, Rastafari, then we know what his imperial majesty has said. We can also be a witness to how he has walked out and lived out those principles, those principles, even as the scripture itself says, um, in his times, he shall shoot, who is the blessed and the only potentate, right? the Lord of Lords, King of Kings. Yes, I was speaking of the conquering line of the tribe of Judah. And that's right there in the scripts. That's right there in the Bible. And let's do this right here for the brothers and sisters. Because as ones listen to this, may the disciples and those who are seeking to get into discipline, you know, um, reserve a couple uh, composition notebooks. You know, get a couple composition notebooks and have a composition notebook for discipleship. Right, especially for the Torah readings and feedings, you know, and to take notes of some things. We have done that over the years with some some very good to very great success. You know, we have done this. And it gets to a point that when you're in the discipline, it really improves you to such a point that you can almost um kind of like stop that discipline for a time and almost you have enough um, credit that has been built up like a bank account, a heretical, spiritual, intellectual bank account that once you apply yourself to the discipline of writing and, and taking notes, there's something mystical that happens between the hand and writing and paper and the thoughts and the ideas that really helps us to use more right, of our physical brain, but also more of our, you could say, the metaphysical mind aspect, more of our consciousness. It really helps us to improve, right? So I just want to share that with the brothers and sisters because those are some of the basic disciplines that we had focused on in season, out of season over the years, and others have even testified to that particular discipline. But the verse that we went to is actually Timothy again. So as we make this likeness between Bob Marley, right, who has a Yehudit, right, or we could say a black uh, Ethiopian Hebrew, or Israelite, a black mother, and a Gentile father, we have the case of uh, Timotheos or Timothy, even in the Bible. And here in Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 6, it says this right here. It says this right here. Let's go to this. It says um, verse 12, chapter 6, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. Verse uh, 12, yeah, fight the good fight of faith, right? That faith, what is faith? We have to define and redefine these terms. And this is where Nati Dread learned the Amharic, 
you know, now they dread learning the Amharic, especially I would say the Amharic is very important because it opens ones up to being able to master and learn various different languages. And we're referring to Dr. Malaku Emmanuel Bayan, what he had said and bore witness to in the voice of Ethiopia, that was official organ of the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated back in the 30s, right? the, like 37, you know, on forward, especially 37 during his time of ministry, 37 to 41, right where the focus on Amharic was very very great and there's a why learn Amharic you can check it out at lojs.org why learn Amharic or you can maybe just look it up like why learn Amharic put Malaku Bayan B-A-Y-E-N and it should come up with one of the pages and you can read what he says for yourself but here it says fight the good fight of faith right the amuna the admittance the credit Right, lay hold on eternal life whereto thou art also called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. You hear what that says? And has professed a good profession before many witnesses. Verse 13 I give thee charge in the sight of Xavier, the sustainer of Elohim, the power who quickeneth or giveth life to all things, and before Christos Jesus or Moshiach Yeshua, who before Pontius Pilatos. Pontius Pilate witness a good what confession verse 14 that thou keep this commandment without spot unrebukable until the appearing the parousia of our Lord Getachin Jesus Christos Adonainu Yeshua HaMoshiach verse 15 who in his time they say which but really it's saying who right who in his times he shall shew who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Verse 16, who only hath immortality dwelling in the light which no man can approach to, whom no man hath seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting, eternal. Amen. 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 I admit. I credit. I'm admittant. I, am, I give credit. I trust as truth. That's bringing out the real sense as we study the linguistics so we can kind of rise, you know, rise from the controlled languages of Willie Lynchism and how to make a slave where they took from us our ancient languages, right, and then gave us a faulty comprehension of their languages. Check that out, Willie Lynch, How to Make a Slave Paper. Um, it's a section called Controlled Languages, right? Now, how does all this link with the Bible and Rastafari. Now, some Rastafari are not Bible orientated. Some Rastafari are, but that doesn't mean that those Rastas who are Bible orientated are necessarily preaching and proclaiming the truth according to the spirit and the truth of the teaching of His Majesty, nor vice versa. All right? Why did I mention that like that? Because, see, Many of us, you know, before Rastafari or before we were conscious of Rastafari, were under, you know, or were influenced or were subjected to. Depends on the individual. We all didn't have a common experience. And in order to get a, a, a common sense, this is why the Rastaman and the elders said, come, 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 make with reason, right? Make with reason, right? Because, see, in reasoning, Right? As I reason with my brother and my sister, and, you know, and they share with me their testimony, their experience, I begin to understand where they're coming from. Right? We're all meeting here, right? We say like on the Mount Zion, on the upper room, and Rastafari, and the spirit and truth of Rastafari. That's the point, right? That we're meeting at, but now we're testifying, right, to our testimonies, right? And some grew up in homes that were Christian. Right, overtly Christian, right? We all grew up in a society or world system, right? This Western Gentile, white Anglo Saxon Protestant. That's why I often refer to as WASP, white Anglo Saxon Protestant, because that's the overarching influence, right, during our times of captivity over here in these here Americas and Caribbean. It was influenced by the Anglo um, American, Anglo European, and Anglo American. You know, whether it's Catholicism, right, whether it's the Protestantism, you know, and then whether it's any of the demonom denominations, or as we say sometimes, demonominations, right, that basically have, have sprung 
forthwith from whatever. So some might have been a Pentecostal. Some of my experience was, you know, with Pentecostalism, right? Others might have been in um, Baptism, right? Others might have been in Evangelicalism, and it's different, you know, denomination and subgroups and subgroups and splinter groups and so forth and so on. Now they all speak about the Bible, generally speaking, right? They all speak. They may, some of them even have their own um, versions of the Bible, like say maybe Jehovah Witness. Right? And then you had some who were Seventh-day Adventists. Right? And many of us already have been reasoning on these things. It's interesting when brothers and sisters can come together and reason on what their experiences are. Right? That's the subjective aspect so we can get to know one another right? as brothers and as sisters. And then we can then look at, well, what's the object? Right? Objectively speaking, what's the object that brings us all together together? What, what, what is that? And that's, that is, who is that? That is Rastafari. That's Ketamawi Haile Selassie. You know what I'm saying? So when then we look at His Majesty's teaching, or His Majesty's testimony and His teaching concerning the Bible. Right? And the main place that I would point to, mm, there's a couple good speeches. Some of y'all know it. Some of us have used those speeches. You know, like we in Ethiopia have one of the oldest versions of the Bible, but no matter how old the version may be, by right, the word, you know, I'm paraphrasing it here, it's one and the same. And I've had some reasoning with ones when they said the word is one and the same. Did his majesty mean that the translation is one and the same? Or was he speaking about the word in the theological aspect, the Tawahedo aspect of Giatachin Jesus Christos, Adonai Yeshua HaMoshiach, our master, Robeno, the rabbi of Rabbi Yeshua HaMoshiach, he being that word made flesh. You see, so he being that word made flesh. So in no matter how many different translations of the Bible right, there may be, right, still the emphasis in the translation right, of the Bible is concerning Yeshua HaMoshiach, especially in the Brit Chadasha. Right, on that particular level. But that's one area. But we have His Majesty Kedemawi Hadassalasi's testimony of the Bible being very upful, as I and I would say, being very positive. Right? Very he 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 affirms the goodness, he even speaks about the goodness, right, that he has found in reading and studying the Bible for himself and how he seeks for his 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 kith and you know, his brothers, his countrymen to also share in that same barakat, we say barakat, like baraka, that same blessedness, that same um, prosperity and increase in goodness, you know, that he has found. And then he also says that, like, to that, and on top of that, to have secular knowledge, right? So when we look at ancient Ethiopia, right, and the Israelites of Ethiopia, this is a different world. To the world that we have experienced over here, right? So some of us have had difficult experiences, hard experiences with the Bible, right? And then coming to Rasta and Rastafari, you know, we find that peace, we find um, like salvation, we find a freeness, you know, in the spirit of Rastafari. And then some ones and ones that might be a little bit overzealous Right? or in a prosthetizing sort of mood, right? trying to deal with make be naive. And this is one thing that we testify to, that this has not been our intent in our ministry. We try to share, well, here's what we have learned from the very beginning. Here's what we have learned. We heard His Majesty say this, right? and this prompted us to go seek that. And look at what, what we found right here, brothers and sisters, basically share like iron sharp and iron to testify, to witness to, you know, what we have gotten to see, what we have gotten to know, right? And to share this with our family, like to share the information, to share the intelligence, the data, share the resources of others, because this is, is education is the key. Education is the key. So the basic education. So we as Rastafari, we as black people, first of all, first and foremost, what Babylon feel like? I, I and I Rastafari in spirit and truth as an Israelite. So we first have to look at the, the first teachings of I and I Rastafari. The first teachings that we have found from some of the elders of the elders, as it were, you know, over here that proclaim Rastafari, that proclaim Rastafari Kedamawi Hala Selassie, right, has been that we, 
the black people of the world, especially in these here Americas and the Caribbean, are the so-called once lost sheep of the house of Yisrael. We are of the Beit Yisrael, of the Beta Israel. That's the core right there. Now, we as Rastafari see I and I ourselves as being the elect I, that have received that new name. So to whom more is given, more is required. So there's an there's a order. Right? And we've learned these things by study. We've learned these things by reasoning with elders, by researching. And we sought to share these truths because in finding these precious truths for ourselves, they so revolutionize our understanding, our understanding, and bringing us to a better overstanding and maintaining a good standing as best and blessed as possible we, as His Majesty, would like to share this also with our fellows, with our, you know, fellows, our countrymen, we could say, with our fellow Rastafari, but overall, right, with all, like, you know, the Beta Israel, the Israelites. So even we seek to minister this. And even when we minister, you know, the teaching of His Majesty to other Israelites, it's not to make them believe or make them Rastas either, or Rastafari. It's just to show that there is a common denominator. Right? See, with that, those common denominators, right, we can obtain and maintain and sustain unity. And unity right, is strength. It's strength. Right? It's strength. We can be strong. <laughs> we can become strong. Right? We can become strong. You know what I'm saying? So, we'd like to just acknowledge this right here for our brothers and sisters concerning the Bible. And also with our co-laborers. First of all, it's not about proselytizing, right? For I and I, it's not about proselytizing, right? It's not about proselytizing. What's proselytizing? Like, like, like seeking to so-called like make a like like make someone believe, right? Not make them. See, it's not about make them believe. But what we credit, what we trust, what we can prove, what evidence we have, and what our testimony is, we share that with others. So at will. If Abba Father Elohim Ha'ab, Ab, if Elohim the Father gives them repentance, right, you know, so that they can acknowledge the truth and recover themselves out of the sneers of Babylon, out of the sneers of Diablos. Basically to save themselves, right? Save themselves in the saving word, the word of truth, in the spirit of truth. This is this is the, the core of it and the Bible becomes one of the points of reference but here's what we have to look at brothers and sisters what is the difference right between the teaching right between the teaching you know of his majesty right what is the difference between the teaching and the experience of his majesty and of the highlanders you know um, Ethiopian Hebrews of the Israelites of Ethiopia what is their experience how does it differ there's a difference Right? And that difference became clear to I in my own experience. I give thanks to my parents, my earthlies, you know, father and mother, honor, right? Um, mother and father, uh, fear and reverence, respect. You know, I give them really thanks because they exposed me to what they believed in, right? And they didn't necessarily directly believe in all of the same things, but there was even a common denominator. As mentioned before, I mentioned to Honorable Priest Isaac, my 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 mother, you know, let me just begin with my mother, you know, she was into the Pentecostal, you know, the Pentecostal church, that black Pentecostal church, you know, coming up from the Exousia, you know, the Exousia Street, like revivals. I got into all that history because I wanted to know about, well, how does the Pentecostal church come up among black people and amongst us here in the Americas. My Nana, I also like to thank my Nana, and though I was exposed to it, and it was part of my environment, at no time was I ever made to believe or, you know, the hell, fire, brimstone, damnation preaching was ever put on me that you better make your altar call or when you die, you're going to go to hell and the devil's going to molest you. I, I never got that, right? How they taught me was they taught me by their word and by their deed. And my father, 
My father, I think um, in his early days, I think they were either Catholic. I think the family was Catholic. My, the best information points to that. But as he came of age and experience, he, um, you could say, adopted Islam. And not the, the nation of Islam, Islam, although he, he worked with them briefly, one of his um, publishing of uh, part of his book, um, The Antiquities of the Black, the Hamitic Race, that he published, uh, Rafiq Ahmed Abdul Hamid, um, that he published and everything like that. One of the, the part one was in the Nation um, of Islam publication, Muhammad Speaks, but he wasn't a Nation of Islam Muslim. He was, I don't want to say he was more mainstream, but the thing that distinguished him was that he was into the linguistics, the language, and he taught the language, and he started an academy of Arabic, al Hamidia Academy of Arabic. So in my growing up, I was exposed to those linguistics, you know, and also, as I mentioned, he was a researcher, you could say uh, amateur to professional, you know, um, historian and researcher, and he published a, a, a work that um, back in the days, back in the 70s, and then we got the permission before he passed on to put it out, and we put it out, and it's called The Antiquity of the Black Hamitic Race. Look it up, The Antiquity of the Black Hamitic Race. That's published by my earthly, my earthly father. So one can understand, you know, some of the influences. Now, we all have various influences, whether it's overt or covert. Some grew up in families where they had, say, no faith or religion was professed or believed in, right? So some of them had to find things for themselves or, and some of them now finding themselves being called, right, as Rasta and Rastafari and amongst I and I. You know, they necessarily don't have the same experience as I do or as a next brother. I have a next brother in, right, who's I think mother was a Jehovah Witness, you know, is a Jehovah Witness. But as he grew up, he grew up under Jehovah Witness influence, you know, as it were. And we were reasoning. And I even say, I said to him, and he reminded me the other day, and he loved Ross Seymour. Uh, duly elected international chaplain in 2022 for the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated in our reasoning. He said he noticed something I had said. Well, I said that the Jehovah Witness, right? I've noticed that some things that they say within their teaching, me researching it and vetting it, I recognize it does reveal some truth Rastafari-wise. In other words, if you look at some Jehovah Witness teaching, apart from the true light of His Majesty, you might not make that. You won't make that connection. Right? But in the true light of his majesty, I've made that connection, such as the whole Christ coming invisibly, as they say in the world, in 1914. Well, between 1914 and 1916, this is where Dejazmach Tafari, the man-child, became known as Rastafari, plenty potentiary, you know, an heir apparent to that throne of, um, that throne of David and the Solomonic dynasty in Ethiopia. Right? And he became in all effect and purpose, you know, you said the ruler of the government as that prince, right? Not even as king, but as prince. And there's a lot of other revelations in that. So he noted how I had mentioned that the Jehovah Witness, some aspects of their teaching, we find to be relevant if it's interpreted in the, the spectacle, as Marcus Messiah Garvey says, in the spectacle of Rastafari, we looked at through the spectacle, rather, of, of Ethiopia, Right? There's some elements of it which is true, although um, Tazi Russell or whoever was behind um, Jehovah Witness, they didn't make the Ethiopia connection. We found the same thing with um, Seventh-day Adventists, right? There's brothers and sisters who have a Seventh-day Adventist background, and we've reasoned on some things, you know, and many things. And I've studied also many things concerning the Seventh-day Adventists. Many of the different, we say, denominations or groups of, um, we say, Christian churches and Christian denominations we have studied over the years because we want us to know the key question we ask and present it at the outset. Like, what is different? You know, why, what are these differences? Because they all are saying more or less the same thing, right? You know, most Christians, generally speaking, are saying the same thing. They're saying something about Christ, 
Christ, the Son of God, Jesus, God, the Son of God, salvation, you know, preservation, this wicked world, and, and they go through the, some of the same, you know, they use the same language, but there's all these different, you know, denominations, you know what I'm saying? So many of our people, my, I'm saying Rastafari, those who are called and chosen and have that call and recognize consciously that call, have been coming from different backgrounds, different awarenesses, and it's important for them in the subjective sense to become clear with that, right, you know, and also to reconcile, you know, and this is what makes it difficult for some, right, to necessarily maybe accept that which some of us is, is not as difficult to accept, as I mentioned, in my personal background, my upbringing, there was never no force. There was never a force to become, you know, a, a Christian or a Pentecostal Christian, and there was never a force to become a a a, a Muslim, you know, Arabic speaking Muslim, right? Even though, I must admit that I might have studied more of the the Quran and more of Arabia Fusa and Arabic and other things related there too that got me into like the Hebrew and, and some of the related studies because you know the Quran speak a lot about the Israelites and the Jews and so forth and so on so it made me curious about well what do the Jews and the Israelites believe so that led me down you know a road and a path or up the mountain you know to come to the higher heights of understanding right now it was later on for me right I went to church often my mother took me to church often growing up especially up until my like bar mitzvah you know a little after that too you know a little after my bar mitzvah years like 13 maybe 13 to 16 around that time just as I entered into high school and and entered into college it was much less I, you know, I stayed home. I didn't really, you know, you know, I did other things. I started to listen to the radio and listen to ones like, you know, Nation of Islam, even um, uh, um, I, I Saeed, Al-Imam Isa, Isa, you know, what's his name, Dr. York, when he was doing the Muslim thing, you know, new, you know the Nubian Islamic Hebrews, Ansar Allah community. I listened to those things. I also listened to some preachers and some of them, but it was his majesty Haile Selassie and what I learned and read of Haile Selassie the first that became most um I can say most um influential you know became most crucial to me you know and it was like it was the curiosity I'm like what I see of Ethiopia is a hundred and eighty degree difference why right, than what I find within my experience so I immediately noticed there was a difference between my experience you know as a black person you know as, as a black man as a black child you know as a black child growing up my experience was different you know let's go over here right here yeah my experience was different give me one moment brothers and sisters right what I learned of Haile Selassie the first right both in word and in deed and then in studying the context of Lich Tafari, the man child, right, known as Ras Tafari, and better known as Haile Selassie the, the first, Haile Selassie, where well, I learned about the context of Ethiopia, with its Judaic, its Hebraic, its Israelitish, its roots, you know, especially with the Ethiopia that I'm speaking of. Now, this does not disclude prior to the Jewish and Judaic and Hebraic influences. We know that Ethiopia, as his majesty says, before Adam, or rather he says before man, before man appeared in the garden, our dynasty has existed and will go and will continue, he said, to exist. So that right there points to, you know, 10,000 beyond, 10,000 and beyond B.C., right? And even from published works, Right, of the the imperial um, Ethiopian government of His Imperial Majesty, I be like there's a book that talk about what's the name of this book again? Um, it's like a history of Ethiopia. It was a book that was published. Sometimes, if you were inquired about Ethiopia back in like the maybe 80s and 90s. If you inquired in Ethiopia, like if you wanted to get some information and you contacted the airlines or the, or the embassy or whatever, sometimes they would send you some of the brochures. But some of the brochures were like little mini books, you know, that talked about a lot of cultural things. And it was very interesting because what I was seeing 
right within that historical um, manifestation of the once hidden empire remember what Psalm 87 verse 4 this man was with Ethiopia this man was born there right well I started to see there start to match what I was learning about the Bible from some of my Hebrew and Israelite influences so I had Hebrew and Israelite influences as I mentioned before um, yes, I ran with the Hebrews and Israelites, like in the 90s. Some of my best brethren used to do um, bike messaging, you know, like bike messenger, you know, in the New York City area. And some of the brothers who were also bike messengers, they were, they were Israelites. So sometimes, you know, we would work and then after work, we would hang out with others and we'll talk about the scriptures or you talk about just life in general, you know, I like say shoot the breeze, so to speak. But also when ones were downtown Brooklyn, I went to Brooklyn technical high school right and downtown Brooklyn the mall area you know they would be there and we would be there also but what was happening at that particular time is that I was on a, a learning and a study mission I didn't even mention um, the Lion of Judah the first um, Ethiopic letter frat fraternity at least in the West that I know of the Lion of Judah my right? fraternity and the Daughters of Zion sorority that we and the other brethren established at, at BC, at Brooklyn College, right? So that was like an academic club, right? According to the school, you know, um, settings, terms and conditions, it was defined technically as an academic club. Because we started to find that there was a lot of books, a whole lot of books about like Ethiopia, a whole lot of books about the Israelites and connections with Ethiopia that were not being studied in the black studies of the colleges you know that we would like the cuny colleges the city of the city university of new york and then also the suny colleges the state university of new york they wasn't being studied there so many of us were so desirous to to know more that the forming of the lion of judah as the first um ethiopic letter frat and that was in opposition to a lot of the black greek stuff and at the very same time, the first um, Egyptian or uh, Kemetic fraternity was also established. I don't know how that has gone on for them, but they were called, I think, Neset, um, Heru Neset Ra. Heru Neset Ra, if I'm correct. Heru H N R, something to that effect. Heru Neset Ra. And this is back like in the 90s. Leonard Jeffries, others came up to the school during Black History Month. And this is when there was a lot of um, kind of pro-black um, culture. You could say black power, but black power through black education, through us learning things about ourselves. So there were different experts. There was ones who were more expert on like ancient Kemet, ancient Mitzrayim, ancient Egypt. We would say Kemet. They would use the term Kemet. For the black and the black land and there were others who were pointing to say the hebrew the the israelite you know or other african cultures to help to reinstill in black people a sense that our beginning our end all and be all was not in the enslavement enslavement so i'm pointing this out to the brothers and sisters when i'm saying like um rastafari in the bible maybe this has to be a part one right here it's Rastafari in the Bible because I like to also engage, you know, with some of the questions that the, the brothers and sisters have. You know what I mean? Because it's, it's, it's challenging to come from the outer court. The outer court is the Rasta. When we say Rasta, you know, we're talking about mainly the accessories. It's still within the umbrella, but it's like at the, like the Israelites had the Erev Rav, right? You know, and even some of the Rasha. They were at the, the, the uttermost, it says the uttermost of the camp, right? They call it the mixed multitude in the translation. I say the mixed multitude because there's ones that, that gravitate to Rastafari, whether it's to the music, whether it's to the cultural aspects, whether it's to the liberty, you know, they call it the diet, but the livet, you know, the ital is vital, the food, the holistic influence, the cultural influence, you know, so there's different influences, the different accessories, but all of this, in a sense, we can say emanates. Remember, man does not emanate from a deity. Man was created in the image and after the likeness, right? But as, as heat emanates from an oven, as, as light emanates or shines from a light source, these accessories of Rastafari, this is the first thing that many of us 
if we honestly speak, got into. You know, got into the music, listening to a lot of the reggae, roots reggae music. And a lot of the roots reggae music, the classic music, even the roots music, is also positively influenced and, and inspired right, by the teaching of Haile Selassie, of Haile Selassie I, and therefore there's a lot of Bible, right, if you listen to some of the old roots, and this is the good thing about YouTubes and the social media now, if you didn't catch certain tunes back in the days, you know, a lot of, and hail up to all the ones and ones, you know, and when you check out their music, you know, make sure you're signed in and you can give them a thumbs up, you know, a lot of the brothers and sisters and sound system that be putting up some classic you know, Rastafari music, some classic Rastafari roots, you know, and reggae music. But the thing that you find about a lot of the classic roots and reggae music is the biblical. You find that there's the biblical influence, but the biblical influence is, is, is though they speak in Bible and terminologies, words and ideas that you can find in the King James Version, they're speaking them in a different spirit, right? And therefore, even Africa and black people comes into that, that word of, um, of, 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 of preaching, proclaiming, proclaiming the good news. You know what I'm saying? They're proclaiming the good news. And they're speaking about real world things, right? About the so-called, we could say, the politics and the politics in the real world. Right? And the need for us to make certain moves in the real world. That it wasn't just like, you know, um, you know, praying to a mystery spook God, but God is in us, right? And God works through us, right? And we have to grow in this grace and the love and the, and the reasoning that we have. A lot of these things, a lot of these, not things, but these are the precepts. A lot of these precepts we have lost. So there's some that blame the Bible for it, right? But it's not really the Bible that's to be blamed for. In fact, I read this early in the days, I'm still trying to remember this book that I read. It was from an English. So some of y'all who are like English Rosses, you know, and who have been reading and studying and know a lot of the books that have been published in England. There's this one book that we seen back in the 90s. It might have a new cover. Maybe that's why I don't recognize or notice it. But I remember this old cover. It was like kind of a yellow and orangish, right? A little orangish and yellow kind of a cover and everything. It was written by a Rastafari brother in England. Something in one of his books, I think it's his book, but a couple of the early books, right, that said um, the Bible's like fire. That the Bible's like fire. In fact, even in the scripture, John says that his word is like fire, right, and like a hammer. But the Bible's like fire. So the fire, it'll depend on how the fire is used. So a lot of us as Rastafari and just as black people and just people in general, right, but going from the center, you know, to the outermost limits, you know, um, have encountered this, this, at least one aspect of the duality. We've encountered the Bible being used like fire to burn us or to, to, to psych us out or to threaten us, you know, like the fire and the brimstone preaching. You know, you're going to hell, the guiltiness, the, this kind of like sight, you know, but this is not, and let me just say this, this is not according to the true teaching of the scripture of the Bible. That's an abomination. That's like the whitewash there, you know, not the whitewash, just whitewashing a picture, but that is like the whitewashing of a doctrine. You see how we'll focus on, say, some of the icons and iconography and say, look, you know, here in the older paintings, we see Yeshua and, and, the, and the prophets and the, the saints, right? We see them as black people. Okay, it's coming up. You'll see it right there. So I'm going to have to come out of this soon, 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 right? We see them as, as, as black people in the early iconography and hail up to the Russian, you know, the old Russian Orthodox and, and some of the other Orthodox communities that have kept some of the ancient paintings where we see the people of the Bible, the people of the book in their true humanity as black and brown people, right? Now that's a point. That's like the overt point. That's like the outer point. But now the inner point we have to get to is how the doctrine and how the teaching was also whitewashed, right? 
in not so overt ways. It's not like we're going to read the teaching and we're going to see them saying white and, and not black. You know, we're not going to see it like that. We, we have to be able to have something else to compare it to. And this is where holy Ethiopia, when we say holy Ethiopia, we're referring to the very beginnings, 3,000, 3,600 years, I'm talking about of this dispensation, this Judeo-Coptic dispensation. And I'm limiting it to this dispensation because this is what His Majesty is revealing to us. That's why I mentioned the verse in, um, in uh, Timothy, right? The verse in Timothy. Like we're going to touch on a couple of more points right here about how we're not to be like, um, like proselytizing. Right? And, you know, making a proselytization and also about what does it mean by converting, right? Converting. So those who are in the more out of court of Rasta are in a very interesting area because we were there too, right? We were there as well, right? The first thing we were saying was Rasta. Yes, I and I Rasta, you know, the roots, the reggae music, you know, tried and gone Naya Bingi, you know, at certain Isla days. You know, bunning, you know, bunning the, the Aishans, you know, the thanks and praises, eating the Aita, you know what I mean? Going to the reggae sessions, you know, fire bunning, you know, the papacy and, and Babylon, you know what I'm saying? So we were doing those things and those things are still principle. Those things are still aspects of Rastafari, right? Don't, don't think they're not. Some might focus on this to the exclusion of everything else. Right. So we really have to look at that right there. Just a couple of points right here. I'm thinking about the time right here as we're getting close to the time and just make this kind of an intro induction to Rastafari and the Bible. And as we mentioned, we heal up ones like Nagis Saba, you know, the sister and her, I think, Blue Frequency, you know, productions. Also the Honorable Priest Isaac, you know, the Tiger's Den, the Tiger's Temple and the Institute as well and his focus and also the Empress Naya their focus on education right on on education right because education this is the teaching of his majesty education is the key so what we need is Bible education and we have to look at the two ways remember as I say before every man there's two ways Moshe said this to the Israelites before you is put two ways and then he even remind them choose life so before us, it's also two ways. It's like two main perspectives, right, of the Bible. There's the way that most of us have received it in the confusion of Babylon, right, all these confusion denominationalisms, right? Some of us um, more harshly, more psychologically downpressive. I, I mentioned before the, the case and the example of Carrie, you know, the Carrie movie. And in the Carrie movie, you remember that one? They're all going to laugh at you. They're all going to laugh at you. You know what I mean? In the Carrie movie, um, the white girl, she suffered, you know, she suffered from a very abusive, a very abusive mother, a mother who was a religious fanatic, right? She was a white religious fanatic. You know how they talk about the Islamo-fascists and, and these extremists, and you know? Well, there are those... Even amongst, um, you know, uh, amongst Christianity, especially they're there, right? But they're not often, because remember, it's usually those among Christianity that's, that's labeling everybody else. Like they try to label us, you know, they try to say Rastafarianism, right? At one time, we bun out anything past Rastafari. It was Rastafari, not even Rastafarian. At one time, the elders burned it out because when one says Rastafarian, and we, the elders will say, and what? And what? Rastafari and what? It's Rastafari. All right? Now they come with these Rastafarianism. But there was also the, the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant zealous and extremists and fanatics. And some of that spirit even got into some of our own people as well. Right? That prevents them from recognizing, even as Rastafari, that, okay, my experience was like this. This other one, I don't even, I'm just throwing the Bible at him, you know, but let's reason. Well, the brother says, well, he don't check for the Bible because, well, why you check for that? How did you grow up? Did you grow up um, going to church or um, um, who, what influence did you have? You know, where do you get this from? This is why Rastafari, we say, come, make us reason. Come, make I and I reason, 
right? These are some of the things that the youths, those who are coming forward now, the youths and, and the children, you know, this generation has to recognize. These are some of the precepts. Come make with reason. Come with reason. It's just like we do often. We'll sit and we'll chat. I ain't sometime as brothers and sisters, you know what I mean? Back in the day, something that is very indigenous to us as even black people and no doubt even just people in general. But I know this as black people. You know, we'll hang out in the project complexes, in the courtyards, or find a little place to drink and smoke back in the days, right? Well, we just took it to a higher level, you know, a higher level as Rastafari. Well, we come and we reason, right? And when you really start to hear a next man or woman reasoning, Right. And you don't just go into just like um, like catechumen responses. Right. But just take what they're saying. And then now it challenges, at least for I, it challenges I and it challenges I on what I credited or, or what I admitted to be the truth or what I trusted as true. I'm using that upper grade on like belief or faith. Right. What I credited. You know, and then it caused me to have to go to a more of the spirit, right? And in going into the spirit, I grew and learned something new in order to reason with them and understand, well, what they are saying. And now, because it's like a cry, it's like saying, well, this is my experience. You know, I was traumatized by the Bible and, and white Jesusism and counterfeit Christianity. And I know my parents, they meant the best, but they traumatized me. This is my experience. And you're saying, well, Haile Selassie say, without even recognizing that Haile Selassie and, and, and the, the Israelites of Ethiopia and the Judeo-Coptic, the Tawahedo Church even, their experience is different. It's like a 180 degree opposite you know what I'm saying? You know, they were not given the so-called Bible, right, in the same sense as maybe other African nations. That's what distinguishes Ethiopia and other certain parts of Africa from the majority of Africa, right? They already had a, a pre-existing, you could say, condition, you know, from even the Old Testament times. And also that region, the peoples are so close, they know one another. We read about it even in the Bible. So they already had that interaction, right? So it's a, it's, a, it's a difference to what we experience. And this is one of the reasons why the European, right, with his counterfeit Catholicism, counterfeit Christianity, and Mussolini fascism was not able to overcome the people, right? But they did do their damage. We cannot ignore or neglect the damage. They did sow some seeds there, right, which the husbandmen did not do due diligence to uproot. You remember the parable of Robain or Yeshua when he says, when men slept, then the enemy came, right? When men slept, then the enemy came and he sowed weeds, right, among the good seeds, right? And thus, we, if we trace that forward to even 74, 75, to the breach, to the rebellion against the King of Kings, to the great transgression, right? So our main knowledge and information source is any knowledge and information, especially published about Ethiopia and about the Israelite, the different cultures and peoples of Ethiopia, pre-1975. That doesn't mean we don't read and use research Posts after 1975, but particularly with core curriculum documents, with manuscripts. I mean, we started to buy manuscripts, you know, like in in um, Amharic and Gutas, even when we were, we were not very strong with it because we knew that, you know, whatever's written here, <laughs> you know, probably has not been translated over there, right? So we have to up our knowledge and comprehension of this. You know, and when we started, it was more challenging than today. And the thing that we can even claim some some credit for is that it's many of our generation coming up in the late 80s and 90s, focusing on Amharic and focusing on Ethiopian and manuscripts and documents that today amongst Rastafari and Ethiopian Hebrew peoples, there's a lot much more resources that are available. Yes, social media. We're not claiming the social media so much, so, but all those things, all things work together for the good of those who love 
Elohim, who love Xiaob and sustain, and who are called according to his purpose. That word there, called according to his purpose. So even amongst those Rastas and Rastafari that are not so Bible orientated, what I would recommend to the fellow co-laborers, the brothers and sisters, come, make with reason, right? Seek to reason, right? Reasoning is important. Seek to reason. Seek to get to know one another. Let me point this out right here because it was on this for a moment. Um, come, right? Let's put come and reason, right? And reason, right? And reason. There we go. It should go to the verse reason right there we go isaiah isaiah 1 18 come now let us or make i and i reason together saith yahweh hey saith yahweh hakados buruku buruk hashem the holy one blessed be bless your name on them harik exiavi here the sustainer though your sins right sins the chet right the chet sin when we get to the root of chet right from chata Chata is to miss, to miss the way, the going wrong, incurring guilt, forfeiting, right? The sin, right? Going, right? Missing the goal, right? Bearing loss, right? Missing the mark brings out the sense. You see right there, missing the mark, right? So we say, also we use the term fukari, the fukari. The fukari is the sins, right? Though your sins, your fukari be as scarlet, right? They shall be white as snow. So we're not talking about our complexion we're not talking about our 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 racial identity in that sense we're talking about the inner aspects right not the physical fight cycle but the meta fight cycle you know what i mean not the flesh you know but the spirit right though they be red like crimson they shall be as wool one more verse right here right it says right here it says if ye be willing and obedient Look at the word obedience, Shama. It says Shema Yisrael. If you listen, if you hear, listen, obey, right? Obedience, Shama. Ye shall eat the good of the land, right? So that even leads to what one's called repatriation or migration or returning to the land, the Aliyah, right? Verse 20. But if y'all refuse and rebel, y'all shall be devoured with the sword. Most of the, many of the Israelites of other camps like to quote Zephaniah 2 and 12. Ye Ethiopians also shall be slain by my sword. But then if we go to Hebrews in the Brit Hadasha, we find that the sword, line of Yahuwah, even from the Old Testament, the Brit Hayashana, the sword is the word, that word of truth. Remember we began off the word, right? The word remains one and the same, the word. Right? The word become flesh, the word. But if y'all refuse and rebel, y'all shall be devoured, eaten up. Right? Eaten up. Right? To eat. Eaten up. Right? With the sword. For the mouth of Yahweh, hey, of he who be who he be, his divine majesty, have spoken. Has spoken. So right there, they're there. Right? You know? And then you can see that we know that the Ethiopian, the careless Ethiopians rebelled, right? Look at verse 21, the first part. How has a faithful city become a harlot? It was full of judgment, right, during the time of Negus and Negus, Ketamah and Hadassalasi. It was full of judgment, right? Righteousness lodged in it, but now murderous, right? The silver, the bird, right, has become dross. The whole economy is off. The wine mixed with water, right? The princes are rebellious and companion of thieves. Everyone loveth gifts like a bribe and followeth after rewards. They judge not the fatherless. What's the Rastafari creed? The fatherless, the orphans, to say, right? Neither neither doth the cause of the widow, the woman, the mother, right? The single mother, the cause of the widow, so to speak, right? Come to them, right? Yes, yes, yes. So there, and then concerning his majesty, right? In his times, he shall shew. Let's go potent, right? Let's see, potent potentent right? I just how, how that one word is spelled there it gets me sometimes yeah first Timothy 6 and 15 it says who in his times he shall shew who is the blessed and only potentent the king of kings and lord of lords right so we have this verse right here where it says this is what we read right and this is what we see as part of that second advent that second coming right there 
you know so th here's the verses right there that thou keep this commandment without spot unrebukable until the appearing right the epiphania epiphania the appearing right the manifestation the mind right right the son of mind the manifestation that is the advent of moshiach whether it's past or whether it's future the appearing right the appearing of moshiach when we say weep not behold the conquering lion the tribe of judah right manifest right that manifestation is memorial is notable right it is conspicuous right so we have that right there right and then we have this right here right who in his times he shall shew his times so there'll be times and seasons so here we just show right here the black jews of harlem because that's part of i and i roots as rastafari yehudi rastafari jews as rastafari israelites right there you know and then getting to the root of the matter so yes the scripture is very very important the bible say the scriptures are very very important but the first thing we have to do is that there needs to be healing right there needs to be healing a lot of our people even coming to rastafari it's like triage right triage and to be healing and to be understanding and in i not early tried in rastafari we saw where a lot of the practices that were done the reasonings the coming together how one's reason how the reasons were really free reasonings where one could really kind of like you know testify and reason and I might be one that says yes the Bible is necessary but I can understand why the next brother or sister you know doesn't see it that way right and part of that's because of their pre-existing condition because their education their environment their experience has ill prepared them for, for 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 this point right here so therefore we as their brothers and sisters there was a verse I was going to share and let me just share this verse right here right there's a verse I was going to share it says what well, says y'all who be spiritual right y'all who be spiritual right let me just share this right here for the brothers and sisters because we have to get ready for the tiger's den and the tiger's temple right um right let's go all the way i think it's the last verse right here where it says those of you who be spiritual right those who you be spiritual let's see if it's over here right spiritual which one is that right okay right there uh spiritual um there we go galatians 6 and 1 brethren brethren chabarim brethren achim if a man be overtaken in a fault right any of us can be like a man overtaken in a fault right all right parap toma right to fall beside or nearby you know to fall beside or nearby laps deviate from the truth right you see what it says ye who are spiritual restore you know such and one in the spirit of meekness considering thyself lest thou also be tempted so we have to consider this for our brothers and sisters our sisters and brothers to restore one another right in that spirit of meekness you know what i mean especially if we truly be about this truth you know so brothers and sisters sisters and brothers right we're just going to seal up right here with this there's some more of course to share but let's just suffice it you know suffice it for now right here 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 yes i in his times he shall shoot who's the blessed and only potentate the king of kings the lord of lords conquering on the tribe of judah shalom chabarim shalom the hitarot